Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery. Today in Olympiad workout series, we are going to solve a problem from INPHO 2019. This is a problem number two. It's on the concept of particle in a box. It's a very famous concept actually solved using Schrodinger wave equation in your chemistry. But what INPHO people want is a slightly different thing. So let's try to go ahead. I've already presented to you this particular question in the previous workout series problem. So just in case you are a person watching this for the first time, I would request you to give it some time before you actually go ahead with my solution, right? So, and this is actually a three page problem. So let me scan through the three pages for you to take a snapshot and make sure that you attempt it for maybe 20, 30 minutes and then come back to see the solution. So this is a first page where part A of the problem is mentioned. Is the second page where B, C, and D, you could see the points on the right side and E, F, and G parts uh, com complete the problem. Okay, so it's a very interesting problem and challenging, but at the same time, uh, INPH for people actually test your patients. I call these kind of problems as trigger problems where you get the first two parts, then the flow will be complete uh, during the entire problem. And that is how the problems are sorted. And the attitude that is required to solve these kind of problems would be completely different from what is required in JE advanced type of an exam where you read a question, you see four options, or maybe you solve that particular problem as an integer based question or something, but you just forget about the problem go into the next one where here your patients levels are tested over a longer period of time and also the strength in your concept okay so now assuming that you have already paused and tried this uh, particular question let me go ahead with the formal wording of the question so this is it consider a particle of mass m confined to a one-dimensional box of length l one dimensional box, keep in mind, the particle moves in the box with a momentum P colliding elastically with walls. That means no loss of kinetic energy. We consider the quantum mechanics of this problem, okay, or the system. As far as possible, express your answers in terms of alpha, which is h square by atom. Very important number that comes in the futuristic Schrodinger equation. Right now we don't require that, okay. So at each energy state, the particle may be represented by a standing wave given by de Broglie hypothesis. Express its wavelengths, lambda dB, in terms of L and the nth energy state. So this is the first question, okay? So let me take question by question. So this is the first question, which I have already read for you. And these are the energy states, right? So you, you could consider the particle moving back and forth and forming standing waves according to the question, right? So this is N equal to one state, just like you are uh, string fixed at both ends kind of standing waves, okay? So that's what this blue color is pictorially representing the uh, matter wave here. So N equal to two, N equal to three, and you could say for nth state, there'll be N lobes, right? Each lobe, as we have a length of lambda by two. So n such lobes of lambda by two will become the length of the box, one dimensional box. So this is the equation. It's a simple one point question, right? You need to just pause a bit and make sure that you are composed enough to answer this. So this drives the entire problem. Okay, so 2L by n is the answer for the first question. Let's move on to the B part. Then after getting that uh, de Broglie wavelength of the nth energy state, he is just asking you the energy of that state, right? So, and in this problem, since the particle is alone and moving back and forth, energy is only kinetic form of energy. There's no potential form. So the value of En for any de Broglie particle or a matter uh, particle, this P square by 2M, and then you consider H by lambda dB, which is P whole square divided by 2m. Okay, so I'll just substitute the value of lambda dB I got in the first question. That's what the sequence needs to be maintained. You get the first one, then you use that in the second one. So that is how it is. And you get that famous h square by 8m, which he wanted to ask you to term right, right in terms of alpha. I put that alpha here. And one more point in my kitty, alpha n square by L square, which is interesting. This particle in a box energy states are different from the, the Bohr's model type of thing where we get one by n square and here you're getting proportional to n square. Okay, right. So let's go on to the C option. The C part, this is slightly lengthier and you could see there is two pointer. So uh, let there be n electrons now. He has increased the number suddenly, each of them mass m, where n is an even number, okay, right? 
uh, obtain the expression for the lowest possible total energy u naught of the system right you need to read it carefully lowest possible total energy all the electrons as a system he's talking about which he calls uh, calling it as ground state energy of this n particle system neglect coulombic interaction between electrons i think this would relieve us because there won't be any potential energy terms you are still in the kinetic energy format so neglecting the whatever energy that he is talking about and the fact this is very important right electrons fill up in the energy levels in pairs you remember that right from your chemistry so if n is even number and two electrons for each level are there then only n by 2 levels will be filled okay so like 1 2 3 so on so forth up till i didn't draw all of them the n by 2th level will be paired up completely okay right so and also i have tried to depict the energy gaps as you could see since this is n square type of number the energy gaps uh, will actually increase between the successive levels okay so uh, that also i have tried to pictorially depict here okay so what is the total energy then obviously i have to add each one's energy remember nth energy state has this much energy so i have many such energy states for which i have to sum up the energy of all of them okay so which means i have to sum up this thing from n equal to 1 to n equal to n by 2 okay n equal to 1 to n equal to n by 2 okay so alpha into n square by l square the one that i got in the b option i borrowed it here and very important part right that you need not you should not forget is each energy state contributes to two electrons so i put that two so brought two alpha and l square out and this would be sigma n square right sigma n square from your lower classes some of the squares of first n natural numbers this formula i think you should be very familiar only thing is small n should be substituted as capital n by 2 rearrange and you get the required answer and also the two points very simply okay i, I think this was the tr tricky part where you should be able to recognize the pairing up of electrons okay so this is your answer in terms of capital n next one so in the next question right if you try to carefully observe express the energy u1 in terms of u0 and relevant quantities when the system is in first excited state so if u0 was in the previous diagram representing the ground state he is talking about first excitation state also similarly he is talking about the second excitation state in terms of u0 he is asking and also the other quantities like n and all those things so i have done first excited state on the left side and the right side uh, second excited state so just concentrate on the left side first okay now i have not drawn the lower energy levels okay right so i have directly gone to n by 2 minus 1th level n by 2th level and n by 2 plus 1th level so in the ground energy state that is u not you would have n by 2th level paired up therefore the first excited energy state would be when one electron goes into the next upper level okay right so now for this one the energy would be same as u not but with one electron missing here and one electron extra present there so for one electron missing here from u not i'll subtract the energy of n by 2th level and for an extra one here i'll add the n by 2th plus 1 energy level here okay so i think you might have got the way i obtained the u1 and you already have the understanding of what is the value of energy right e subscript n was alpha by l square into n square right and i substituted so n by 2 i have substituted rearrange and nicely you'll get one more point here okay right similarly this is the tricky part here the second excited state you, you can't just take this electron up okay right you know uh, you can't fill up the upper levels by leaving vacancies in the lower levels at least each level if it has to be taken into account it should be half filled or completely filled before upper levels are filled right so hun's rule so in this particular problem therefore the second excited state is the one where imagine uh, the f uh, electrons are paired up till n by 2 in u not then you take the energy electron from here to here so that is what let me mark that the second excitation energy would be depicted by this kind of a jump that you are talking about so this jump is what is referring to okay right and therefore uh, this time same thing you have to subtract the absence of an electron here in n by 2 minus 1 and add the presence in this case so only difference is instead of n by 2 here 
you would end up having n by 2 minus 1 so similar calculations just rearrange and you will get this kind of a number so the first excitation energy is this second excitation energy is this uh, one of the trap here is that not to consider second excitation state to be a consequence of the first one that is that will that will happen in the in 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 generally in the uh, single electron species in multiple electron species you need to be very careful when you are taking the excitation energies in steps okay right so this is what you need to understand so once you got these two that's the end of the d part okay let's move on for the e part now things become again simpler how do you know always look at the points and think in a very simple manner right so don't try to complicate things whenever you see simple points okay it might be one step question okay so when the system is in ground state let the length of the box slowly change from l to l minus delta l imagine the box is being compressed by someone by very small amount obviously energy states will change obtain the magnitude of force on each wall in terms of u naught when delta l is very small compared to l i think this is a very standard way of finding force from energy you remember any of our conservative forces we calculate by changing the value of u by small amount and then get the value of f using work energy theorem so work done by external agent in compressing that uh, walls is force applied into delta l that should be equal to the change in the energy states from l to l minus delta l we already borrow the answer that i got for the uh, second part where i wrote u naught you remember uh, not the second part c i think where i wrote the energy value so u naught as a function of l i already know so final value should be calculated for l minus delta l you can do that subtract and get a big expression and then finally write this but if you are smart enough once this value is tending to a very small value this is nothing but the first principles of differentiation you bring delta l down right so instead you directly write f approximately because this delta l is very small can be written as dou u by dou l so what is the differentiation of this with respect to l all the upper terms will stay an, intact it's only the l squares differentiation in the denominator so l power minus 2 you'll get a 2 on the top right and then you'll be get a cube here so when you write that in terms of u not the two survives entire u not will stay as it is but extra l will stay in the denominator so it's a simple expression that you should be getting the smart part to avoid time waste is to convert this into the differential format okay right so let's move ahead now assuming the capital n what is capital n the number of electrons is very large obtain the ratio of r du not by dn not the number of electrons i think n is the number of the uh, so yeah n is the number of electrons so that he is considering to be very large in number obtain the ratio of two quantities one is this quantity du not by dn a simple mathematical expression you already know u not versus n just differentiate nothing to worry about to the energy level of the highest occupied ground state here the english is very important he is talking about the energy level of the highest occupied ground state please understand in multi electron species the ground state itself represents different energy levels occupied among all those energy levels occupied he is talking about highest energy level so just think in a straight manner in your u not term he is talking about that state which is the highest occupied state and i think you remember it is n by 2th level that was occupied so he is talking about u uh, the value of energy all value of energy of n by 2th state okay right so first let's do this part of the calculation i just differentiated this and then when you end up getting this term uh, because n is very large only higher powers i'll take so from here to here only this differential i have put in so this is the expression higher powers are neglected as n is large and the highest occupied energy state this underlined thing i have written here corresponds to small n equal to n by 2 remember the difference between u and e u is sum of all energies e is the particular energy that is what he is talking about here so i just substitute instead of small n n by 2 and just put it here and you could clear clearly see these two terms are equal to each other okay so it, what is the ratio of two equal terms in this case it will be f1 that's what he is expecting and you'll get one point again okay so let's move forward now we assume again n is large consider the possibility of electrons forming a uniform continuum of length l with constant linear density okay so now is considering that electrons are like a gas it's a continuum in that box using dimensional analysis calculate the gravitational energy of this system ug assuming that it depends on its total mass capital g 
and L. Equate this energy to the repulsive energy of U naught of capital N. Obtain L in terms of N and related quantities. You should have read this very carefully. There's nothing actually difficult in this. He's talking about dimensional analysis, asking two energies to be equated. That's it. So using dimensional analysis, you know that gravitational potential energy would be related to GM square divided by L. Okay, so this should be L, sorry. Right, uh, yeah. GM square divided by L. This should be L again here. So this should be L here. Right. So capital M is total mass. Please understand. He said this is related to where is that? Where is that? Yeah, here. Yeah. Total mass. He said, what is total mass? Total mass is number of electrons into mass of each electron that I have written here. Okay. So that number is equal to the energy of the repulsion, which is U naught that you obtained. You kept, you obtained that C part that you are borrowing that here, nothing new. Okay. Only difference is when you are equating here, N has to be considered large. So among all these terms, only the highest order term will be considered. Okay. So this kind of patience and practice is required. You practice more such problems in the exam. You'll get the composure of being able to make this approximation over the course of the problem. Okay. So this is what you need to learn over a period of time. Okay. So trust me, it will come with the practice. So you rearrange He's asking what is N L in terms of other quantities. So you just rearrange, you get this. And finally, in the final answer, you are expected to write alpha. Either you leave it like this or substitute the alpha back. And this would be the required answer in terms of the rest of the quantities. Okay. So that's the end of it. Actually, what happens is in this particular thing, whatever you found out is also the solutions of the Schrodinger wave equation in one dimension. So he's given you an alternate way of arriving at these things. Okay, so whether you know that Schrodinger equation or not, it doesn't matter. But in case you are interested, please go to uh, Resnick and Halliday and go to the uh, section of particle in a box and read through that. And it's very interesting. And you'd see all these uh, written in that format in a different outlook okay so that might be a future question so it's better we revise those things also for olympiad it's not there for je advance anyways so this is our next question in our uh, olympiad workout series which i will uh, give you within one or two days so this is from online physics olympiad o p h o 2020 we have already done two problems in this it's very good paper has very good questions so i don't want to read and spoil your experience try to read it you'll be really surprised with the solution in which direction it actually would go okay so try to keep your eyes and mind open and try to think in all possible ways to arrive at the answer in the exam conditions okay so uh, for those people who are tuning in very uh, um, late uh, there is an Olympiad workout series that has already been happening. Many questions have been done. So you want to check out the previously done questions. There is a playlist link in the description below. So please go surf through the vi videos and be a part of the journey that we have already begun. Okay, right. So like, share and subscribe and try to make sure that the channel reaches as many uh, needy students as possible. And also, uh, if you are a lecturer, try to share it with your uh, peer group and students and try to keep suggesting what I should be taking in the comments section. Okay, so uh, see you in the next video. And thank you.